Hi to everyone. Now let us discuss about a method for water shuffling process that is demineralization. Before going into the method in detail, let us recall what is meant by softening of water. It is nothing but of removal of all the hardness causing salts present in the hard water. Then the next question is what are the salts which causes hardness? Calcium, magnesium and other heavy metal salts are present in the water then it causes hardness to the water. But usually we will be highlighting only calcium and magnesium salts. Why is it so means they are present abundant in hard water. Coming to the methods, how to do softening. Either we can go for lime soda process or we can do it by means of ion exchange process. In case of ion exchange process, we can exchange only the cationic part of the hardness causing salt. Then we will be calling the method as zeolite method or we can exchange both anion and cationic part of the hardness causing salt. That is what is called as demineralization. Let me explain the same with an example. So what is lime soda process? Here. We will be adding calcium hydroxide and sodium carbonate to the water sample so that all the hardness causing salts are going to be converted into precipitates. Once the precipitates are going to be formed, we can remove by means of filtration. Say for example, if calcium sulphate is present in the water, we can choose sodium carbonate. By the addition of sodium carbonate, calcium sulphate and sodium carbonate will react with each other and converts into calcium carbonate and sodium sulphate. Calcium carbonate is a precipitate so very easily we can remove by means of filtration. But by this method after the addition of lime and soda unless we are not we are going to stir them effectively we cannot remove all the hardness causing salts. So this process is not going to be much effective in nature. So we can go for ion exchange process. So what is ion exchange? Here I told you already that we can exchange only the cationic part of the hardness causing salt or else we can exchange cation and anionic part of the hardness causing salt. Coming to the first one that is all the hardness causing salts are going to be converted into non-hardness sodium salts that is the cation the calcium ion present in the hardness causing salt is going to be exchanged with the sodium ion present in this that is this is what is called a zeolite process. Zeolite is nothing but of hydrated sodium aluminosilicate. So by zeolite process we will be converting all the hardness causing salts into non-hardness sodium salts. But anyhow the water will be containing non-hardness causing salts. So we can go for the other method where we can exchange both cation and anion. That is calcium ion is going to be replaced by means of hydrogen ions and the anions are going to be replaced by means of hydroxyl ions. That is why we are calling this method as demineralization. So now we are going to discuss about demineralization in detail. So what is demineralization? DE means removal. So demineralization of water means removal of all the ions present in the water. I hope you know what is meant by ion. Ions are nothing but of electrically charged particles carrying either a positive or a negative charge on it. So thus by removing all the ions present in the water, we can convert hard water into soft water. So how demineralization is done? By using ion exchange resin. So what is a resin then? Resins are synthetic organic polymers. So what is an ion exchange resin? It is an resin it, or else it is an insoluble polymer of high molecular weight. It can carry either acidic groups or basic groups for exchanging ions. Actually, if not practically, how this ion exchange resin will be looking like means you can see in the picture it appears like small bead like structures. If the resin has to act as an ion exchange resin means what characteristic it should possess. It should be a long chain macromolecule. Unless it is a macromolecule we cannot call it as a polymer. And then it should be having microporosity as well as cross-linking. These two characteristics will help in exchange of ions very easily. And moreover it should be insoluble in the medium. Apart from all these characteristics, it should be possessing suitable replaceable functional group. Then only it will be acting as an ion exchange resin. So let us discuss one example for the ion exchange resin. That is styrene divinyl benzene acts as an ion exchange resin 
provided it is having suitable functional groups. But this tyrant divinyl benzene is a copolymer. Do you know what is meant by a copolymer? Polymer which contains two different type of monomers. Here styrene is one type of monomer. Divinyl benzene is another type of monomer. By combining these two we are getting this copolymer. This tyrene divinyl benzene on sulfonation acts as cationic resin. That is this is styrene and this is divinyl benzene on sulfonation sulfonic group is incorporated into this this hydrogen ions the hydrogen ions present here will be exchanging the cationic part of the hardness causing salt so this cationic resin we are depicting as rh plus the same styrene divinyl benzene if it is incorporated with suitable functional group say for example quaternary ammonium with hydroxyl as a functional group then it acts as a anionic resin that is all these hydroxyl ions will exchange the anion part of the salts which are present in the raw water so this resin we are depicting as r dash oh minus so how does the ion exchange resin work means cationic resin attracts all the positively charged ions in the same way anionic resin attracts all the negatively charged ions now these cationic resin as well as the anionic resin are packed in two separate columns let me explain the process the raw water containing hardness and non-hardness causing salts is initially sent into the cationic resin column where all the cations are going to get exchanged the water which is coming out from the cationic resin column is sent into the anionic resin here all the anions gets exchanged and finally we will be getting demineralized water let me explain the same with the help of schematic diagram and the reactions now let us assume that our water is containing calcium chloride, magnesium sulfate, sodium chloride and sodium bicarbonate. When we are allowing this water into the cationic resin, exchange of cations are going to take place. You can see in the reactions, that is, the hydrogen ion present in the cationic resin is replaced by means of calcium ion, which is resulting into R2Ca2+. In the same way, magnesium ions are going to be exchanged by hydrogen ions and sodium ions also. That is, calcium, magnesium and sodium ions are going to be retained in the column, leaving behind all the hydrogen ions. So, the water which is coming out will be having hydrogen ions in it. That is, all these salts have been converted into acids, but it is in the dilute condition. Now this water is taken into the anionic resin column. In the anionic resin column, once again, all the anions are going to be replaced by means of hydroxyl ions. Here you can see the chloride ion is exchanging with hydroxyl ion in the same way, sulfate ions and bicarbonate ions, leaving behind all the hydroxyl ions. That is, the water which is coming out from the anionic resin column will not contain any ions except hydrogen and hydroxyl ions which is nothing but of water that is why we are calling this water as a demineralized water now how long this demineralizer will be working till the cationic resin column and the anionic resin column is going to get exhausted what is the meaning of that one that is, in the cationic resin column, there is no more hydrogen ion and in the same way, in the anionic resin column, there is no more hydroxyl ions. So, in that condition, what should be done? We do have only two options. What are they? One is, we have to place or discard the cationic and anionic resins and we need to freshly pack it with the new one. But it is not a good idea always because it is not going to be cost effective in nature. In that case, what can be done? We can go for regeneration. What is meant by regeneration? 
that is when we will be going for regeneration when the bed is going to get exhausted that is here there is no hydrogen ions at all in the similar way you can see in this bed also there is no hydroxyl ions that is it indicates that the, these columns have been exhausted during that time we need to disconnect the connections between cationic resin and to anionic resin column and this has to be regenerated separately and anionic resin has to be regenerated separately for cationic regeneration we need to send dilute HCl for anionic resin column we need to use dilute sodium hydroxide so when we are sending dilute HCl through the cationic resin what may happen the reverse whatever we have seen in the previous slide the reverse reaction will be taking place that is now the bed is having Ca2 plus ion we are passing hydrogen ion through that exchange of ion is going to take place between these two and which is resulting in RH plus in the same way if it, is, if it is going to be magnesium or sodium ion the same type of reaction is going to take place what about in case of anionic resin all the chloride sulfate ions and bicarbonate ions are going to be replaced by means of hydroxyl ions so the water which is coming out from these columns are going to be wastewater but by analyzing these wastewater only we need to ensure whether the cationic resin as well as the anionic res resin have been regenerated properly or not so I, I hope you all have understood the concept behind demineralization and the process as well as the reactions coming to the advantages the demineralizer produces very high pure water and moreover the treated water will be having less than 2 ppm of hardness since it is less than 2 ppm we are able to use it in the high pressure boilers as a feed water and moreover the water which is coming out from the demineralizer is on par with distilled water then what about the disadvantages before sending the water into the demineralizer the water has to be filtered then only it will be working properly and apart from that the water should be free from iron and manganese salts also why so because these iron and manganese salts will block all the pores which are present in the resin in that case regeneration becomes very difficult and moreover the demineralizer will not be able to treat non-ionic and colloidal impurities then how to improve the efficiency of the demineralizer means we can connect a series of cationic resin columns with a series of anionic resin columns the what is the idea behind this one it is very simple that is if any cation has escaped in the first column means that can be retained in the second or else in the third column so by adopting this method we can improve the quality of deionized water or else we can go for mixed bed deionizer what is meant by mixed bed deionizer that is the cation and anionic resins are going to be packed intimately and everything is going to be arranged in a single column so by arranging everything in a single column what is the advantage when the raw water is entering into this mixed bed deionizer column the cations and anions present in the raw water will come in contact with the ion exchanges repeatedly so this mixed bed deionizer will be acting like a demineralizer which are connected in series so once again in this case also we will be getting very pure water but what about regeneration in this case how to regenerate regeneration in case of mixed bed deionizer is bit tricky so what we have to do for this means we need to go for backwash when we are doing backwashing all the anionic resin beads will raise up and the cationic resin beads will be settling down at the bottom why is it so cationic resin beads are higher in density when compared to anionic resin beads but we need to ensure whether proper segregation has taken place or not 
that is why usually in case of mixed bed deionizer columns they will be having a glass side port through that visually we can check whether proper separation has taken place or not once it is separated through the side port we can take out the anionic resin beads and we can regenerate it separately and cationic resin beads can be regenerated separately after regeneration once again cationic resin and anionic resin should be mixed thoroughly and packed in a single column now coming to the advantages once again this mixed bed deionizer results in very high pure water and good quality of water and pH of the water is going to be almost neutral. I hope you understood the concept of demineralization as well as the different types of deionizers. If so, try to take up the following quiz. Hope you will be able to answer for the questions or else you can check the next slide. Thank you for listening. We'll meet soon.